20 years of simple, no nonsense muscle building advice in one video. I recently uploaded this video for fat loss. We're gonna do the same thing now for muscle building. As you know, muscle changed my life. I used to be scrawny. I was a pip squeak. I was a long distance runner, couldn't get the girl. And when I gained 40 pounds of muscle, my life completely changed. It was a stepping stone to going out to achieving so many other things. So this video is important to me because I don't know where you're at in life, but by starting this journey of looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, hey, I wanna see what it takes to get bigger. I respect that. I understand it's not just about vanity. It's about being disciplined. It's about putting a plan into action and following it and being consistent and developing character along the way. So while it's very tactical, science-based and works, regardless of whether you're on drugs or not on drugs, this is the stuff that works. So let's dive in. Number one, master the basics before you optimize. This is the word of the day, but most people have nothing to optimize. If you can't do a basic deadlift, bench press, squat, you don't need anything fancy in the gym. We need to learn how to get the best bang for our buck with the exercises that stimulate the majority of muscle fibers. So we start here. BPAC always said, fundamentals always beat complexity. Whenever we're trying to get fancy, fancy fails. Simple scales, that's a business concept as well. And in the gym, for me, I always felt like I needed to do like, you know, a two day split or a three day split or a five day split, which is more complex, more advanced. But it's amazing that even today I come back to full body workouts and full body workouts three times per week get me great results, keep me lean, help me keep the weights going up. It's just perfect. Two, progressive overload is king. You have to challenge your muscles with more over time to grow. Mike Rizzotel says, progressive overload is the only way to keep making gains in the long term. And when you're first starting out, for me, I always felt like you just gotta keep getting stronger. If I'm benching 225 now, I should be getting up to a 315 eventually, right? And that's not true. I think you have to understand that progressive overload can mean different things. It could be doing the same workout in less time. It could be increasing the frequency of the workouts. It could be increasing the volume of the workouts. We need to understand that progressive overload can be induced by different variables. It doesn't just have to be more weight or more reps. That's a very simplistic approach at looking at progressive overload. Three, perfect your form for longevity. Sloppy form, we all know, doesn't just stunt growth, but it can end your career early. You see these guys, I remember going to the Olympia talking to these guys in their 20s and they're like taking a year off because they blew their back out doing a five, 600 pound deadlift. I'm like, why? And the video got a ton of views, but now the guy's limping and he's like flying around the country trying to find a therapist who can fix him. Proper form is not optional. It's essential if you want to stay injury free and see long-term gains. And I, and I finally figured this out. I'm like, I could beat some of these guys who are bigger than me if I'm just consistent and don't get hurt. Number four, train for strength, not just for size. Now the key is that you have somebody design you a well thought out program. So I hired Granville Mayers, a Canadian powerlifting champion, and he gave me a 16 week program that I was shocked at how thick it made me. And it was a legit powerlifting program. And when I went back to hypertrophy training, that is when I looked my best. I first of all couldn't believe how much weight I was lifting, but I was starting to feel this like deep um, pain in my joints. And I'm like, I gotta be careful here. But with all that to say, I saw the value personally lifting for strength. Everybody tells you you need to have strength cycles to increase your muscular capacity. It is true, but you gotta make sure it's done in a way that supports long-term growth and doesn't injure you. Number five, work through your controllable and active range of motion. The term that everybody talks about today is full range of motion. Like, what does that actually mean? You know, what if I can't get into that bottom position? What if I don't have the biomechanics, the mobility? What if I don't have the flexibility? What if uh, I don't have the contractile ability to get into certain ranges? What if you can't get into a lengthened position? Because one, I had elbow surgery here. Um, I can't fully lengthen this joint because there's obstruction here. We have to listen and we have to Make sure that we're not following advice that doesn't actually make sense for our body's ability to get into certain positions. 
Well, this is one of the biggest things I learned from Tom Purvis, the creator of RTS123. It was one of the biggest game changers to staying injury free. Number six, increase time under tension. If you look at anybody in the gym, the fastest way to help them improve their workout is to tell them to slow down, specifically on the lowering, the eccentric range of the movement. Science has shown that this leads to greater muscle growth. So just simply slowing your movements from a two second negative to a four second negative will completely change the experience of the workout. More time under tension means more muscle growth. Number seven, focus on mind muscle connection. This is the first thing you got to master in the gym. Tom Purvis had this great quote in RTS, which was muscle growth is as much neurological as it is physiological. What that basically means is you have to feel every rep. If you're just going through the motions and you can't actually contract the muscle tissue, you don't feel it. It means you're dumping tension into your joints. So why is this important? Because your muscles only grow when your brain tells them to. And what the muscle shows is that if you don't have this mind muscle connection, you can't recruit the muscle tissues and you can't isolate better. You can't target the thing that you're actually trying to fatigue so that it in order grows. Number eight, don't chase the pump, chase progression. I used to be guilty of this because, you know, you knock out a ton of supersets, short rest periods, high reps, all these drop sets. Then you take a great selfie, you had a bunch of carbs the night before, and you're like, oh man, I look jacked. And then you get all these likes on your social media, and then you just chase that pump, right? You want that dopamine hit of the validation that came, but you're actually not making progress. And the progress is gonna come from strength progression. Going back to point number two, progressive overload is king. Number nine, recovery is more important than you think. Muscles grow while you're at rest, not in the gym. Mike Rizzatel got a great quote. He says, training hard is pointless without recovery. That's where the real magic happens. And I think the magic is in figuring out what your optimal recovery abilities are. And everybody's are different. You know, some people can only handle full body workouts. Some people can do a two day split. Some people can train twice per day. That takes progression to increasing your training threshold, your training capacity, uh, improving your body's ability to handle more wear and tear. So when you figure out what's optimal for you, that's when you're gonna get the optimal results. Number 10, isolation is a full body activity. Now what I mean by this is that when you wanna isolate a muscle, if you wanna isolate the biceps and you're curling, you have to lock everything else in stone. Your lats need to be stabilized, your core needs to be stabilized, your glutes, your quads, everything needs to be removed from the equation so that you are only working through that joint that those muscles cross. And the better you understand this concept that isolation is a full body activity, you learn how to engage the stuff that creates these pillars that you can create arcs around so that you can actually direct tension into the muscles and not just swing stuff and dump stuff and catch stuff. Number 11, you gotta hire a coach. The best programs I've ever followed were written by somebody else. I've worked with many coaches over the years, Ian King and Charles Polkin and John Berardi, Ben Pakulski, Ryan Fanley. I've hired a lot of people. I actually just recently hired a running coach. And what they write you is just, it's so exciting. Anybody who's ever hired a coach knows what I'm talking about. And it feels like Christmas morning when you get your new program. And you know, I've got these cool drills that I do before I go run now. And I got this 10 minute mobility thing I do after my workout. You feel much more empowered when you're following something that's already had all the guesswork eliminated and you just have to focus on the execution. So when you have something to look forward to, it also eliminates the boredom. They're gonna see blind spots that you are missing and they're gonna prescribe things that you likely wouldn't do. So yes, you can find cheap workouts you know, on apps. You can find a gazillion workouts on YouTube for free, but workouts are not the same as programs. There's intention with the program, there's randomness with workouts. When you get on a program, you're gonna see gains like you've never seen before. And you'll start to understand the science and the art of progression. Number 12, overeat protein. And I'm not saying eat four or 500 grams of protein a day, but we all know the standard recommendations of approximately one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Some people say one gram per pound of lean muscle tissue. We're gonna be in that ballpark. Everyone's gonna be in that ballpark. I have found for optimal gains when you overeat on protein, 
you recover faster, you look harder, you have less cravings, you have more mental clarity. I just find my brain works better. It just produces a better physique. So when in doubt, if you've got a chance to eat extra calories, just eat more protein. And last one, gotta be patient. Gains take time. Now when you're a beginner, it's normal to pack on a lot of newbie gains right out of the gate, but to break plateaus, consistency beats intensity every time. It's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. And I will leave you with that because it's such wise advice to not go to the gym and try and be a hero. Check your ego at the door and go in and stimulate, not annihilate like Lee Haney says, and just have that long game vision for your body and for your health. And just realize that building muscle is not a sprint. It is a marathon. So you got to show up every day. The results will follow. Um, hypertrophy takes a lot of time. Even when you're consistent with training, with nutrition, with recovery, it still takes a lot of time. And there's nothing that can replace time. No drug, no pill, no powder, no potion. So we need to just appreciate the gains that we've made. And I'll leave you with my personal advice. Always measure backwards. Think about how far you've come. Don't compare to the guy that's got 18 inch arms. Remember that you started with 12 inch arms and now you've got 16 inch arms. That's what you should find pride in. Find pride in not performing or operating from pressure, but from being proud of who you are and how far you've come. And that is a much more sustainable fuel source to drive your goals and achieve your dreams. Let me know which tips I left out that you would have added to my list. And I hope you found this extremely helpful and we will see you in the next one. Keep leveling up or you'll level off.